Hello world, Stephen Michael Zach here, and today we're taking a look at the Zhuin. This is their F100 new wand light. Now, this will cost you about $250 at the time of the recording of this video, but I did buy this with my own money, so these are going to be my own brutal and honest opinions as always. So, let's jump right into it, and let's take a look at what comes inside the box. My own brutal and honest opinions as always. This is new to me. Okay, so here we have the case, and it is uh, sort of a medium, hard, uh, medium soft case. Uh, it's got some plastic along the edge here, um, but it's not the most uh, protective, so don't put anything heavy on top of it. But it does have a nice handle here. Uh, there is no shoulder strap, and it feels pretty good. The zippers feel very robust and feel very solid. There is a little bit of rubber here to reinforce the zippers, which I really like. And when you flip this thing open, you are going to get uh, this foam. Again, not a huge fan of this kind of foam, but there you go. There you have it. That's what they the, the company uses. But inside, you're going to get the wand with, of course, the barn doors pre-attached. You're going to get your uh, grid here, and we'll, we'll dive into the grid a little later. You get your quick start and instruction books. And you're going to, of course, get your shower cap diffusion. Again, we will jump into this, and you're going to get a USB to USB Type-C for charging. Now, there is an option where you can actually get a, a, pow a power brick. Uh, I did not go for that option because I have many power bricks here in the studio that I could just use with this. Uh, so if you have yourself a, a, a power brick, the proper power, power brick, uh, you don't need to buy it. So there you go. <laughs> Now, taking a look at the build construction, the barn doors are very plastic. Uh, the hinges do feel really good on this. Uh, it feels fairly solid. It is not going to wear out anytime soon, uh, maybe over time. Uh, it does have a shiny, um, like this, almost like a shiny tape on the middle, uh, it, uh, on each panel, and uh, folds up quite nicely. Now, it is made of plastic. And when you do take this off, which I highly recommend not doing, in fact, they made everything so you don't have to take it off. Uh, but if for some reason you do want to take it off, uh, you can, but it is a little bit hairy uh, when you take it off. Uh, we'll cover that later in the video. I've got a nice little rubberized part here, which feels pretty good in the hand. And when you flip this thing over, you've got all, it's made of plastic and you've got all your little fans here, uh, a screen, which is very reminiscent of the screens they have in their gimbals. And you have a very young Nuo type style dial and power button there. On this side, you do have a little hat, little cover here for your USB type C and barrel plug. So you can use a V-mount battery with this. And on the bottom, you are going to get one very small quarter 20. It is, it does have a brass or metal uh, quarter 20 in there. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Now looking at the grid cloth, uh, it is um, not the most elegant design, but it is functional. Uh, it is grid cloth, it does have a grid pattern, which is very nice. And you do get this very, very, very well uh, designed um, grid here, uh, which I really, really like. We'll go more into the grid uh, a little bit later, but very, very well designed. Now, one thing I do like about these barn doors is that you can, you don't have to take them off. You can just fold them back and you should be good to go, which is uh, very, very, very cool. So let's go ahead and take a look at the menu system. Now, let's go ahead and hit the on button here. And when I first turned this on, it said upgrading. Um, so I'm not sure whether it was trying to pull from the phone or whether it was just pulling from the web, uh, but it did finally just go to the main screen. So here we have the main screen. And we are at uh, 4,000 Kelvin is what happens when you turn it, first turn it on. And this goes from 6,200 Kelvin all the way down to uh, 2,700 Kelvin. And 4,000 Kelvin is going to be all the LEDs working at once. And to control this, you do have to press uh, for the CCT. Uh, it is to the, uh, to the left, and it does say dim... HSI and FX, you can't, and max up here, you can't really see those. Uh, so that is interesting. Uh, so you just have to press in the direction of the setting. Uh, let's go to 4800 Kelvin, because that's what I shoot at. And let's go all the way down to, well, this goes to zero. Um, 
And as you can see, it is not, uh, it is very flickery when it goes through them. It is not very smooth, but we'll go to about 10%, uh, about 10 percent here. And as you can see, this thing is quite bright. Now, when you press up on this button here, uh, you're, this is going to switch into something called max mode, which is incredibly bright. And then from there, you can kind of press to the right and you can change the color temperature while this thing is in max mode and you are getting ultimate brightness. Uh, the one thing with max mode it is it's going to tear through your battery very, very quickly. Uh, it also is going to immediately uh, move your light to 100% power. So let's go back to about 10% power and even 10% power is just fine. Now to go into the HSI mode, you're gonna press the wheel down and then if you want to switch between the HSI, the saturation, or the uh, how bright it is, you're going to push in the direction of the function. If you push in this direction, you're going to accidentally go back into uh, <laughs> your CCT mode. So there are directions here. And of course, uh, as you can see, let's go ahead and let's go for at 100% power here. And it's very easy to accidentally change what you want to do. Let's go to my favorite 240. And let's go to 100% power here. Now, this is very quick. I do really love the wheel because you can just run your finger along it and get to where you need to go fairly quickly. And there is the RGB right there. And then you do get some special effects here when you press to the right here. You get this SOS, which I never understood why SOS is a thing on these things. Then you can press that that way again, and you can control how bright the SOS is. We're going to stay at 10%, pushing back to the right. Uh, then to switch effects, you turn the dial here. You get faulty bulb. You get candle. You get lightning. You get your fire, which actually isn't bad. Uh, and then you get these weird chase modes. This is chase mode one, uh, zero. Here's chase mode one. Then you get chase mode two. <laughs> and here's chase mode three. <laughs> and this is really for like music videos and putting in the background chase mode four. So they all do these kind of interesting things. And you got five, which I think is a, a, an interesting one. Six. And of course, mode seven, uh, which is just kind of the lights going up and down. I don't know if you can see it on camera. And that's it, back to SOS. So let's talk about the shower cap here, the diffusion. And let's go ahead and throw this on. Now, I do believe it goes with the label up here. And it is not the easiest thing to get on. I usually put it over one and then drag it over here. Uh, problem is this keeps closing on me. So you kind of have to just struggle with it until you get it. And let's go ahead and try to do this. I did this much, I was much better at this when I first put it on. And there you go. That is pretty much how it is going to go on. <laughs> Uh, not the greatest uh, design, but once you've once you're done with the struggle, and you have actually gotten this thing on properly, uh, it does actually do a nice job of diffusion. So there you go. Uh, and I may have this upside down. I don't know. Uh, it seems to go either way. Uh, you do have to kind of get in here and move these apart until it looks good. So it, it's not, like I said, it's not very elegant, but it, but it, but it's functional. And then we go ahead and turn this on by holding the button in. And let's go ahead and jack this thing up. And as you can see, this thing does diffuse very, very, very well. Um, once you get it on, uh, it does work. I'm, I'm very impressed with the way that this works. So uh, all in all, the shower cap, not bad. A little difficult to use also uh, don't put it down because it may change on you <laughs> so there you go there you have it now let's talk about the grid here uh, the grid is very interesting it does have these little pockets uh, which makes it much easier to slide this thing on you just undo the velcro here and we want to go ahead and set this up like so and you just kind of slide 
one side in. I don't think it really matters what side goes where. I want to make sure the Velcro is out of the way. I usually like to put in the Velcro side first here. So we'll go ahead and slide that in. And then you go ahead and extend this over to this guy right here and slide that in. There we go. <laughs> this is a bit tricky. And then you do have to kind of pull the barn doors apart. And then you take your Velcro and you want to wrap your Velcro all the way around here. Like so. And take this Velcro, wrap it around. And here we have the grid. And as you see, the grid works. Now, I'm going to show you something that's wrong with the grid. Uh, let's go ahead and bump this power up to fairly high here. And you will see that there is uh, something interesting with the grid. And that is uh, the grid has massive multiple shadows. You actually see, can see the grid lines uh, within the light itself. And that is because of the way they have designed the LEDs. So let's take a look at that. So as you can see that there are two strips of RGB that go up the center. And then uh, once you get out of here, uh, you'll note, as you can see, that uh, they do apologize for the flashing. Uh, so basically what's happening is you have you basically have white and then an RGB and then two white and then an RGB and then the next row is a tungsten and then the same pattern again and again all the way up. Basically you only have like two strips of RGB going down here which one makes the RGB very, 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 very dim and pretty much unusable. And because of the way that this is aligned, the array is aligned, uh, you, that's what's giving you, that's what's actually giving you the grid lines in your shot. Uh, so it essentially makes this useless because when you slap this on and shine light through it, because of the way this is arranged, uh, you're gonna get basically grid lines, like the grid lines over your, your, your subject. So, you are not, uh, you can't really use this thing. Um, so that is unfortunate uh, that you do have that. And the further away you get, the worse it gets. Um, so that is just unfortunate uh, that they made a fantastic grid design, but because of the way the LEDs are, um, it's not really usable at all. So there you go. And of course, like I said, getting this thing off, and like I said, getting the barn doors off is very hairy. You kind of have to, pull at it and pull it off. I'm not going to do it because if you do not put this on properly, uh, the barn doors will not close. So I'm not gonna take this off. You can uh, pull it off. You can just bend the plastic. It is very hairy. It is it's very scary to do that. Um, and it's made to keep this on so you never have to do that. So you could just fold these away like so. Okay, so let's talk pros and cons. And the first thing I cannot overlook as a con is the way the LED array is aligned. Uh, it just is not great. You don't get that much RGB. You get two little strips of RGB. So yes, the RGB is very, very weak on this light. Uh, you have to use it at a very close angle. Otherwise, it is not bright at all. Now, I will say, while I love the grid, uh, again, because of the way the array is aligned, uh, you are going to see these grid lines in your image. It's going to cast a big shadow. Um, so essentially making this useless and the further away you get, yes, it's, it's faint, but you can definitely tell that there are just grid lines everywhere. So great job designing this, but it doesn't work with this array. Next thing that is a con is the way that this comes off. Uh, it is very sketchy. I would just leave it on. Don't touch it. Uh, the other thing is when these fans go on, these fans have a weird chirp. And they don't all go on at the same time, uh, but when they go on, it's got like this high-pitched chirping sound. Uh, so definitely keep it away from things like your sound. Like if you're just doing photography or videography, something, products, you know, product stuff, and you do not have, you do not need sound, this is fine. But if you're using sound, I would not use this at all. Um, it's not loud, but it's, it's definitely audible. Uh, you definitely hear it, and it definitely uh, is a weird high-pitched chirping sound. Next, let's go into the menu system. Uh, it was a little difficult to figure out the menu system because the uh, the 
words here are in black and then they backed it with black so you almost couldn't see it in fact uh, I didn't notice this when I first opened it now that I have it at this angle I could actually see the words uh, I could see the dim the HSI and the effects and the max they should have done they should have printed those in in white not black so people could see it uh, because I sort of kind of had to guess where things were because I didn't notice them because uh, again, black on black, you can't see it. I will say that the power button is a little bit small for my big meaty fingers. I do like the way the dial moves. Got a very nice screen, gives you all the information you need. The special effects on this are just kind of meh. Uh, I mean, the, the chase light things, those are good if you're doing a music video. Uh, those are fun. You can just set this up in the, in the background. That's okay. And the fire is okay and lightning is fine, but some of the other effects are just really flickery and just don't really feel like they're the actual thing. Uh, and again, you have, you have control of brightness, but you have no control of the speed of things, which I would really love in this uh, next time. I'd love to see the speed. Uh, I'd love to be given speed control. And I will say that this thing is heavy. I would not want to be the guy Hollywooding this for an hour or two. Uh, it is very heavy. And again, it's also very awkward, just like the Amaran, T4, uh, T4C, which I will be reviewing soon. When you put the battery on the end or a battery handle, this becomes very awkward and very heavy on one side. Uh, so I would have would have loved if they would have given us some kind of like, you know, maybe in a, another piece of plastic here uh, with like a, any kind of mount or something, like a like a mount so we can mount a clamp or something. Uh, maybe giving us mag magnets on the side here. That would have been nice. So we just magnetize this too. That would have been very, very, very cool. They'd have to be very, very strong magnets, but there you go. Uh, I'm not really crazy about the quarter 20 here. Uh, yes, it is metal, but you know, I would, this is gonna bend your stand. This is gonna bend the crap out of your pin, pardon my French. Um, I don't like mounting things like here that are heavy uh, because if you have a weak light stand, it's just not gonna be good. I really wish they gave us another mounting option or maybe given us like what Nanlite makes, a little um, stand that clips onto the handle uh, so we can stand it up or hang it. Uh, that would have been uh, probably much better. Uh, so again, you can mount it this way, but mounting it this way, I would worry. Uh, I'm most likely, if I'm gonna mount this vertically, I'm gonna use a super clamp right in the center. Uh, or somewhere down here. Uh, I'm not going to use the quarter 20. Uh, would have been better if it were like a 3 8 or something a little, a little bit bigger. Um, and again, there's no way to mount it from the top either. So there you go, there you have it. And again, while the grid is well made, it doesn't work well with the uh, array. So from the cons to the pros, this thing does what it's supposed to do. It is super bright, especially when you hit that max mode. Uh, it is unbelievable. I can definitely use this as a key light. Um, I do like the shower curtain uh, diffusion. Uh, although not very elegant, it does. It, it is practical, it does work. Um, so they did a good job on that. The grid design, lovely, but again, like I said, the array. Um, very, very, very cool. Uh, the, if, it, just using this as a bicolor device is fantastic. Now, again, it is brightest at 4,000 Kelvin, uh, and then you're gonna probably most likely get some drop off on either side, but not a whole lot. And you always have that massive max button. Yes, it'll burn through your battery, but man, is it bright. Uh, and I do like the way that the barn doors are um, designed. They work very, very well. Now, one thing I will show you about, and I should have added this to the con section, is they do not cut very well. Uh, there is a lot of, and as you can see, I'll try to pump this up for you, so you can see there is a lot of multiple shadowing here, uh, especially on the edges, especially when you try to get these tight together. Uh, you are just gonna get like massive shadows, as you can see on my body. Uh, you can get massive lines because there is a lot of light leakage from the hinge and from up top and at the bottom. So to help that, you may want to use some black wrap in some strategic places, but uh, getting very, very, very thin cuts, um, it's okay. Uh, you're going to get a couple, of, you're going to get some double edges. Uh, I really wish there was a way to put some diffusion in there and then put the barn doors on. It's kind of like putting barn doors on a panel. Uh, they just kind of help control the spill. They're not really there to shape the light. Uh, and that is unfortunate uh, that it is like that. But it is just, um, just okay. So at the end of the day, who is this for? 
if you are doing product photography, product videography, anything without sound, music videos, um, or, or you're doing, you know, maybe interviews and this is far enough away from your site, from your microphone, maybe as a, as a hair light or something like that. Um, this is not bad. Now, some things I would fix on this thing, definitely change the fans. They chirp a little too loudly and completely redo this array. Uh, they might want to consider net in the next model going with the, um, the, the, the amber white magenta, that, that kind of, uh, that light where every LED lights up and it just mixes colors uh, to, to make tungsten and to make daylight. I think that would serve them a lot better. It would make this thing even brighter and it would most likely fix the problem with your grid um, where it wouldn't, you wouldn't see the grid lines. And also giving us maybe a little bit more diffusion or some kind of other diffusion plate to put over this so that when you put the grid on, uh, you're not gonna, it's not gonna show the grid lines. But, other than that, this thing is pretty impressive. Uh, they definitely went for power uh, and that definitely shows. Um, I'm very, very interested to see what they come up with next. Yes, I will be taking a look at the M40 soon as well, uh, but this is not a bad device at all. Um, but I would possibly wait till maybe they make a version two um, because there are definitely things they can improve upon. Uh, but for a first time out, this is pretty impressive. So those are my thoughts, but I want to know yours. So leave your questions and comments in the notes below. Also, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and don't forget to mash the bell button to be notified when we drop a brand new video. And feel free to use the links below as it helps out the channel. I'm Stephen Michael Zach, and this is new to me.